Hey guys, welcome back once again to another video on the channel. By the way, I just want to take a few seconds here real quick to thank everyone who's been tuning into the channel lately and commenting on some of my videos. I read many of your comments on here from time to time, and I really do appreciate your support. So thank you so much for that. Okay, so uh, today's video will be about Autel Robotics' Nano Plus. Now, I've had this guy for a little over 10 months now, so I've been able to test it out and put it through its paces quite a bit. I really do like how it performs when it comes to the camera specifically, but I'll talk more about that here in a few. Now, I'm not going to go into a full unboxing in this video. I just want to share with you some basic information on the Nano Plus and some of my personal experiences with it and what I like and dislike about it. So for those of you who don't know, the Nano Plus is made by a company called Autel Robotics, and it's their first ever sub 250 gram mini drone that was released officially in January of 2019. This was right after Hubson's own release of their Xeno Mini Pro, and much more before DJI's release of their Mini 3 Pro. Just like the Xeno Mini Pro, the Nano Plus has front, rear, and bottom obstacle avoidance sensors. But what really makes it stand out among the pack is its new 1 over 1.28 inch RYYB image sensor. This sensor allows it to perform brilliantly in low light conditions by letting in 40% more light into the sensor using a new color filter array. Now, I won't get into all of the science behind it here, but I'll leave a link below for those of you who want to further read on it. Apart from the image sensor, the camera has a fixed aperture, or f-stop, of 1.9, and it also uses a Leica lens that helps to increase the overall image quality. The camera on the Nano Plus is pretty much the same as the one you'd find on the P40 Pro Plus smartphone uh, made by Huawei. And uh, it's really an amazing camera. I've tested it in low light as well as at night, and the results are quite stunning. One thing that stands out on the Nano Plus over the Xeno Mini Pro and the new DJI Mini 3 Pro is that they've added an internal cooling fan that keeps it from overheating. So this is a big plus for the Nano. The Nano Plus does accept micro SD cards of class 10 and up with storage capacities between 32 gigabytes to 128 gigabytes. I personally use the SanDisk Extreme Pro, which is fast and reliable. Apart from the micro SD card, it also has an internal memory storage option of 64 gigabytes. Now, as far as the motors go and how they perform in windy conditions, when I first received mine, Autel had not yet released any firmware for it. So at first it struggled in the wind a bit, but after a few firmware upgrades, the stability and wind resistance have improved since then. Personally, I think they could have done better, especially when it comes to the propellers. They do look nice as far as their design, but they do feel very thin and fragile. It would be nice to see someone design better props for it, like those made uh, for the DJI Mini 3 Pro by Master Airscrew. That would definitely be something that I'd be interested in. Now let's talk about the battery. It uses a 7.7 volt 2250 milliamp battery that on paper gives you a 28 minute flight time. But in reality, you only get around 23 to 25 minutes, and that's just speaking from my own experience with it. Not a big deal if you have more than one battery, but if the Xeno Mini Pro and the Mini 3 Pro give you around 35 to 40 minute flight times, then Autel should have been able to achieve something similar or closer to this. Of course, you do have to keep in mind that the internal fan does drain a lot of the battery's energy, so that's understandable. The batteries also have smart technology built in that allows them to discharge safely after three days of no use. And you can disable this discharge feature directly in the app anytime you want. When it comes to the obstacle avoidance, it does perform better than that of the Xeno Mini Pro, in my opinion. 
uh, it's able to detect obstacles at a farther distance and you can also see the distance shown between the quad and the obstacle directly in front of you via the app which i like and you can also disable the obstacle avoidance sensors in the app the oa sensors also work with the new dynamic tracking feature that was recently released after a very long waiting time which was a big boo-boo on Altel's part but fortunately for me I was able to test the beta version of the dynamic tracking feature prior to it being officially released to the public. I did find the official version to work much better over the beta version which would be expected but again Altel's engineers seriously need to give it some more TLC. It works but it's still not where it should be compared to the DJI Mini 3's Pro tracking. The camera settings in the app have also been improved through recent firmware upgrades, uh, which now allow you to access them directly in the app's interface, which is better than before, but not perfect. For example, switching from auto to manual settings is not as smooth as it should be. I always find myself having to fiddle with the settings a bit to get it to work right, which can be frustrating many times because it takes away from the little flight time that you have available. So they also need to work on fixing this. One thing that I found to be a lot of fun when using it is the quick shots feature. It's the best that I've seen on any sub 250 that I've flown, with the exception of course of DJI's mini series, which I do not own. It's very simple and super easy to use, and with just a few taps, you're able to get a short quick shot video. I also like how it uh, automatically returns back to you once the quick shot video is done. Another cool thing that the Nano Plus has is a 16x zoom feature that allows you to zoom in really close on a subject that's very far away. Now the only drawback with it is that when you're zoomed in all the way, the video image looks splotchy, sort of like, I don't know, a watercolor painting, uh, which is kind of weird. It's a fun feature to play around with for kicks and giggles, uh, but that's about it. Another positive thing that I have to say about the Nano Plus is its ability to quickly connect to GPS sats in just a minute or less. I mean, it's really that impressive. Uh, the RC is also great. I love the design and how they made it to look and feel like a video game controller. Uh, it has a really nice grip when you're holding it in your hands. And the joystick gimbals feel very smooth, unlike other controllers where the gimbals are either too loose or too tight when moving them around. This one just feels perfect for me. When it comes to the transmission signal, boy, Autel really did outdo themselves. The signal penetration through obstacles is excellent. I never do any uh, long range tests, but I did take it out to 500 meters easily without any cutoff issues whatsoever. And the FPV image signal is always clean and fluid with very low latency. So I'm very happy with how it performs in that area. One thing that I forgot to mention about this RC here is that it also has an internal cooling fan so it keeps the internals working at a tolerable temperature without overheating. Unlike the Smart RC of the Mini 3 Pro, which tends to overheat a lot. So that's another big plus for the Nano. Anyway, I think that's basically all for my take on the Nano Plus. Overall, I really like it, and it's actually my go-to quad at the moment. Now the one thing that people had an immediate issue with, and I can understand, was its hefty price tag. When it first came out, it was priced at a little over $1,000, and most people just don't have that kind of budget to spend. But recently, they've uh, dropped the price dramatically, and you can now find one online at 
I don't know, between six to seven hundred dollars, I believe. Depending if you go with the standard version or the premium bundle, which includes three batteries. So that's not a bad deal. Of course, it all depends on your personal preference, budget, and what works best for you. Many people prefer DJI because, well, they're the best at what they do, and they can also afford to put out products at a competitive price and sell them like hotcakes right out the oven. But that doesn't mean that they don't come with any flaws. But again, in the end, it's all about personal preference, what budget you can afford, and always, always do your own research before listening to anyone, including me. Alright, so with that said, I'm calling this one a wrap. Thanks for tuning in again and taking the time out to watch this video. I hope you enjoyed it and were able to get some useful information out of it. If you did, I'd appreciate it if you add a quick thumbs up to it before you go. And feel free to subscribe while you're at it. God bless you all, those that are his. Be safe, be good, and I'll catch you on the next one.